like Fedora or uh, other open source projects. So who are the ambassadors? So an ambassador is, uh, we are like the voice of Fedora. Uh, we represent Fedora, we uh, promote Fedora in different ev uh, events uh, across the world. So um, ambassadors are responsible so the public uh, can uh, know our four foundations and uh, they have to know what uh, Fedora is working. So uh, we are putting people behind a name because when I say what Fedora is doing, uh, isn't Fedora who is doing all this, but it's uh, the people that are behind it, uh, our community. Uh, outreach, so we, uh, we are bringing Fedora into new and exist existing places for new and existing people. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, ambassadors are responsible to, to grow the community base, so we can have more people uh, that uh, can join can join Fedora, our community, and uh, contribute there. And also impacting a future generation of users and contributors of all ages. And also advocacy. So what we do, uh, we teach and show uh, how Fedora improves the community experience, community, uh, computing experience, sorry, and uh, how makes uh, our life easier, how protects our freedom. So we are Fedora. And so if you change the context a little bit, there's also the program, the lesser known program of the Campus Ambassadors. So who are they? Uh, they mostly focus at outreach at an educational level, looking at universities, high schools, primary school, a variety of different places. And campus does not necessarily equate to student. Uh, it can include professors, teachers, system administrators, and school districts. It's not exclusively limited to only students. Um, so the campus ambassadors also impact all kinds of students. Uh, obviously, computing professions are applicable. It's easy for you to point at a CS student or an IT student and be like, oh, here's how Fedora can help you, or here's how you might be interested in Fedora. But there's also overlap with non-technical fields, too, whether it's literature, philosophy, sciences, mathematics, liberal arts. There's tons of different applications for how Fedora and open source can fit into students' lives that aren't necessarily technical. You can look at like the science, like there's a science spin for Fedora that has a lot of really useful tools and open data tools for working on scientific experiments or other uh, calculation tools. There's the design spin, there's the jam spin that all focus on things that aren't necessarily technical. So you can use it to produce music, to remix your own music, to create artwork, to create design assets. There's plenty of other ways that open source and Fedora can be used outside of only technical fields. Um, and they also are supposed to work at all levels of teaching to bring information and resources about Fedora and open source technology into the daily discussion of students' lives. Sounds great, right? Well, it's not quite like that. Unfortunately, the program originally started in 2009, but it never really quite took off. Uh, it's a complicated history. And we want to try to revisit that now and offer some clarity to the situation about how to go forward and kind of reboot this effort. So looking, looking back, uh, if we see the origin story for campus ambassadors, uh, it was really difficult for us to find uh, some information to gather some data of uh, what was, uh, who were part of it or what have they done. Uh, because uh, the program does not have much of a uh, documented past, so also it's not actively uh, maintained today. Uh, but we have some um, numbers of events that they have done. Uh, uh, it, it depends on different releases. Uh, but we can see why did this uh, project start? Uh, so they wanted to improve uh, outreach towards students that were exposed to open source project and Fedora. Also, to put uh, Fedora in hands of students today, so we can grow the platform tomorrow. So, uh, because if they are part, uh, if um, they are part now of the project and uh, they continue to contribute there, they will be um, long-term uh, contributor to our uh, to our project. So, also bringing uh, younger contributors to help uh, bring new ideas to the Fedora project. So we can share our uh, our ideas. We can discuss about them 
and after that we can implement them. Uh, and what worked and what didn't work. So, as I said, uh, we uh, also contacted the person who founded it, Justin, but uh, we haven't uh, received any email from him. So it was really difficult for us to find some numbers, but uh, we, ca we know. No, I yeah. have some input to that. Like, uh, I can say from India specific point, Okay. Uh, back in 2009, when Campus Ambassador was getting discussed, mm -hmm. and we suddenly got a flow of like a lot of people or students who never even heard the word Fedora before, but all of them wanted to become Campus Ambassador, ambassador so that they can write it in their resume. <laughs> and it's still going on with the Ambassador program somewhat, but I'm just giving you an idea. So at that time, we actually asked uh, FAMSCO for a special permission. So if you go to the Ambassador's join page now, mm -hmm. You will see for the India's part, it is written on the top that at least in India, we do not actively encourage students to become ambassadors. And that line came up because it, it was becoming difficult for us to have anything related to Fedora and the campus and the ambassador program. So that was one issue we faced in India. Just to add you, like why it did not go ahead. And there are a few other projects who actually went ahead. I can actually name one of the projects, a company, Sun. So, and it did not go well for them. Thank you. Thank you. So, if we see the numbers of events focused uh, on uh, students' education uh, by Federal releases, we can see Federal 20, we have 11 uh, events, Federal 21, 4, Federal 22, 2, and Federal 23, we have only 5 events. Uh, of course, that's uh, uh, more likely there were uh, there were more events because uh, for six months we can't have only two events for example uh, but it was really uh, difficult to find a record uh, of their events that, that's why we need to to show off what we do we need to do blog posts uh, post it to our mailing list and so we can find uh, more information and uh, the numbers that we saw uh, were searched from the event page on the wiki that we have and also past recorded events that they've done. Could you give, yeah. could you give an example of like, what, what events this encompasses? Like? Uh, events held at different universities, uh, showing them how they can be part of it, uh, what will they do, how is the process, the structure of it. In one common form, we might see. Yeah, yeah hackathons are one yeah. form. Hackathons. Anything that's specifically targeted towards like a, a student audience. So the hackathon is probably the easiest thing you can think of for what that kind of event yeah. would be. Uh, do you have some kind of like metrics to measure the success of such an event? Like people coming and then like how many are sticking around and like. We'll definitely get to that. So now, before we start looking into suggestions and ideas, let's kind of get like a set rep of what we're looking at right now. So the program exists, but there's no clear way about how it fits into the greater picture of overall ambassadors or really how even a student can go from being an ambassador to a campus ambassador. Because it used, until just recently, it was a requirement that in order to be a campus ambassador, you first had to be a sponsored member as a regular ambassador. Um, until recently that was just changed, but even now it's still unclear about how to make that transition or what that even means, like what's the difference really? So it needs more direction and, and focus. It, it needs some more energy behind it. Um, so kind of the event strategy that's happening now, which really is more applicable to ambassadors rather than campus ambassadors. Uh, conferences work well for bringing in a large variety of people, including students. And there's a great talk that just happened by B this morning about all kinds of crazy awesome numbers about looking at these kind of things with uh, tools that we already have in our infrastructure like data gripper and other things I'll get to in a minute. Um, it's also showing and teaching students what kind of things they can, they can build with Fedora and how open source is a popular draw for them. So when we go to a hackathon, it's a matter of showing like a lot of times students are like, I want to build this thing. I want to do this. I want to make it happen. And you're like, well, here's these things that Fedora, or it doesn't even have to be necessarily Fedora, but like here's this tech that happens to be available in our distribution, and here's how you could use this to make your idea come to life and become a reality. Um, it also is exposing different places of Fedora and open source and how it's a draw. It's not all programming, seriously. Like I mentioned earlier, there's 
the design lab, the jam lab, there's the science lab, there's tons of different things that aren't exclusively computing. And one last thing is it's also in some places it's really a popular idea to have the user freedom and empowering the student or the user about what they can do with their distribution, what they can do with their system. It's not you know a company being like, here's your environment and here's what you're locked into. Because that's what, as far as at least in the United States, that's kind of a little bit of the culture behind some of the, like the, the teaching today. So it's like, it, it, sometimes it's a new idea for like someone to think like, oh wow, you know, I can change everything. I can change the entire experience and create an entirely new thing. Whereas before I'd be stuck with what I'm given. And so there are a variety of really cool tools and utilities that we have right now that are really great for uh, targeting students at uh, local events that we put together like hackathons. Uh, badges are absolutely incredible because uh, they're a great way to first gauge impact at an event. So you go somewhere and you're like, oh yeah, we talked to this many people and this many students came up to us and they took this many DVDs, but at the end of the day you're like, I don't know what's happening to them, I don't know what's going on. But you have a number about if they have a FAST account, they can scan a QR code, go to a link, and they instantly claim a badge that's added to their FAST account. And you also have an indicator, you have what their FAST username is. So it's easy to gauge, like, oh, well, here's this person. And you can take a number to see, like, we, have, we engage with this many people that either took the time to make a FAST account and get the badge, or they already had a FAST account. And maybe they're like, oh, yeah, I signed up for one a long time ago. And, I think I still have it, I'll get the badge, and they're, they're still engaging with Fedora in that way. Um, and it's also incredibly useful at using, at uh, seeing previous and future involvement with the badges, like checking in uh, a report that was done on FOSDEM 14 and FOSDEM 15 by B also, was looking at, um, like it was a month before and a month after about contributor activity. If they had an account before FOSDEM, you were looking at what their activity levels were at and how they were engaging with the project and then you looked at it a month after the event and in most cases you had an increased number or an increased amount of participation and interest following FOSDEM for the event and before until the three years ago when badges really took off it would have been very difficult to be able to find a way to get that information and that's all made possible by data grepper uh, so there's something behind data grepper fed message is one of the messages buses that Anytime you do anything in Fedora, all the notifications and the bots and the IRC channels that fire off, there's a mailing list post or a commit. FedMessage is the fire hose that's submitting all of that constantly. And Data Grepper is kind of like the, the nozzle to the hose. It lets you have a little bit more control to tune in on the specific amount of data, whether it's like IRC meeting, commits, packaging, Bodhi, you name it, it's more than likely on FedMessage. And more things are getting on it too, like Zenata for translations is a recent one I know of, and I don't know if Bugzilla's, I know it's done, and if it's not implemented yet, it's very close to being implemented, which is something that previously we never had access to in the Fed message bus. And it's a very useful tool for understanding the way our contributors are interacting and engaging with the project. So uh, looking ahead, what about the future? Our four main areas that uh, we're going to look at now are uh, onboarding, mentorship, not just students, and visibility. So, onboarding. Uh, if we look uh, at onboarding, um, we need to, to have clear steps for students uh, and faculty members, how they can get involved, so how can they be uh, part of the project. Uh, we need uh, to, to have like uh, the really clear one, so uh, which is the first step, the second one. Like we have uh, different teams, for example, you have to introduce yourself at the mailing list or uh, you have uh, to, uh, to find a mentor for the process. So they need to be uh, really clear. And also bringing people uh, in and connecting them. So uh, if you are a new person joining the project, if, uh, for example, I uh, find also two other ones and also the others find two others, uh, it will be like a chain uh, and uh, we will have a, a, a more, uh, a bigger community. So uh, also we should um, be really careful so the newcomers feel uh, welcome uh, and they feel confident at our community. So connecting the dots to make people feel involved and part of our community. 
also uh, providing them uh, resources and interjection uh, they need. Physical meetings are the perfect one, so uh, meeting space uh, is powerful because it's better uh, when you discuss with someone uh, face to face and talk with them. Um, it's better than uh, talking online on, uh, on IRC. Uh, also, addressing mentorships and how to guide new students towards uh, being Fedora advocates without creating hurdles. So we should use the word mentors or mentorship. Uh, sometimes for the students, for example, uh, if we say mentor, it's like you say teachers and we know that students uh, don't like too much teachers. So it's kind of, um, uh, we can, or we can choose uh, also another word, it, it's up to us. Uh, uh, so the process needs to be really simple. So uh, will need not be a process really hard, so you uh, need to be, to have um, really uh, uh, lots of knowledges or really uh, lots of technical stuff, but uh, if you know the basic things, you know, uh, how the, our community works, something like this, you can be a part of it. Uh, and so the process would be simpler and easy uh, for people to, to be there and so they can be motivated uh, to be part of uh, the project. So mentorship. Uh, we have... Um, so empowering uh, current ambassadors, uh, campus ambassadors that we have and students so they can mentor each other because uh, if uh, you are new and after some time uh, you will know how the, the project works, uh, how things are there. So after that you will be able to teach uh, those things to another one. Uh, that's, why, uh, that's why it would be way better than having uh, mentors, for example, from um, our uh, ambassadors uh, program that we have uh, and would, would be uh, way better to, to teach each other uh, every time we have newcomers. Uh, so the standard training helps set the right path for interesting participants that want to get involved. And so after they are trained, they can train also others if they have the right resources and guidance uh, are available. So teaching to teach the others. Also we have, uh, so similar to other programs, lightening qualifications on mentorship uh, policy will be important for it to flourish. So perhaps uh, we have mentorship and not mentor, as we said. Also we can find another thing, uh, it's up to us. So uh, also removing the title, uh, the status or the title as the mentor and looking at mentorship as the matter. And we need to uh, have more people to bring uh, at our project. Uh, as I said, if you bring uh, two others and the others we bring also other people, it would be way better for us. So. And so one of the other key things that can be addressed too is it's not just students for campus ambassadors. There's plenty of other people who are actively involved in the education scene that aren't just enrolled in courses or our students. There's instructors, there's professors, there's teachers, system administrators, other faculty members of, of numerous different educational facilities. Students aren't the only players here. And one of my favorite examples is actually another ambassador in North America and also an author for the Fedora magazine, Charles Prophet. He is a uh, system administrator in a local school district in western New York. And one of the things that he's always been pushing for as a system admin is to use different free and open source tools behind the uh, school's uh, local infrastructure. Um, I know there's a few that he was looking at for monitoring tools and he's slowly kind of breaking it in and spreading it out to other system administrators in the, in the region. And it's a slow chain reaction and he, one of his biggest challenges is trying to convince like the administrators about free and open source software. And the, the example he cited to me was there was a time where he was talking about trying to use like uh, this new open source tool and his uh, minister or his manager was like, we will never use open source software in the entire time that I am in this position. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so while he was holding back his last, despite the fact that there are already open source software running everywhere, uh, that's one of the challenges that you have to face in that position is lack of understanding or sometimes even not 
willing to understand. You have resist, active resistance. So having resources and guidelines for the people in those situations who are like, I'm stuck. I have these people who aren't going, they don't understand, they don't listen to any of this. Like, I don't know what to do. I feel powerless. Like, what control do I have? And there's other people in those situations that have experience, like Charles, for example, who have done this and be like, oh yeah, this is how I broke it in slowly and, sh and surely I got this thing in and it led to another thing and I started teaching other people about open source software and our infrastructure and it started spreading. So things like uh, one of the, probably the easiest examples I could think of would be like creating a Fedora computer lab, which could also be a faculty oriented guide, but it could also be a student one too, if a student wanted to be proactive and kind of igniting that effort. Um, maybe if it's for teachers specifically, if it's teaching with open source and Fedora. Like I said, all the other different things, it's not just technical. You have the design, you have the, the, uh, the games, the music. I mean, there's tons of different spins that aren't exclusively related to technology and that teachers could use these to educate their students and get them also exposed to open source tech and even Fedora. Um, the other two examples, kind of like the ones with Charles, where it would be like using open source and Fedora in your infrastructure, or breaking down proprietary walls in your school. How do you do that? Like if you think about it, you're like, wow, that's a huge thing, how am I going to do that? But when you have something that's like, you know, here's advice, here's a step-by-step -step kind of walkthrough about how I did it in my region, and when you, have, when you have a community of support with other people who have done it, it makes it a lot easier for you to be understanding how you can proceed with this in your own region. And it's like, it, kind of like with the bringing in two students, it's like a chain reaction. If you can start something and, sure. So, um, one important question to ask is, what is the end goal of, the, of, of that? Because uh, it, there, there, there are two very different end goals that I can see there. One would be, of course, um, impre increasing Fedora's presence in school and computer labs yeah. versus uh, an end goal could specifically be means to an end of getting more students, uh, more students who have become involved with the Fedora project. And those probably have different uh, needs in order to in order to drive that into those. So which one or both is this attempt to, uh, to address? And how are you focusing effort? For me, like I see that as a matter of, well, it depends on the person. So like if you have a student, then it's probably a little bit more oriented towards exposing other students to Fedora, to open source. But if well, it's like a no, I, I mean, from a strategic perspective for the ambassadors, you know, where should they be focusing their efforts? I mean, it, are we going to throw, re, throw funding and resources at every, at every idea, or are we going to say we really want to push on these ideas? I think that's kind of a question that's kind of already happening, at least from what I've seen in FAMNA, or the Ambassadors of North America. Um, I think there's starting to be some discussion because like a lot of like the, the traditional Linux events, the ones that we've been going to for years and that were well-known presence there, it's usually the same, like not all the time, but it's like a lot of times it's the same people that we're seeing at every conference or every event and or we're not having the impact that we think like we might have and there's nothing, especially with like data grepper and badges, we have access to this kind of we're getting to a point where we have easier access to this kind of metrics and evaluation about our impact. And uh, the one thing that really kind of motivated me for this was in March, we had BrickHack at the Rochester Institute of Technology. And I remember that entire weekend, like, I, and I was comparing versus like, you know, I, I read and studied up on a few other events happening before then and even years in the past about how they were doing with interaction and engagement. And I don't know, the kind of like energy that I kind of was picking up on at BrickHack, like I remember we had about 30 people scan our badge, which was about attendance is roughly 260 people, which was about one somewhere. It was like a it was a, it was a low percent. It was under five percent. But then you look at events like Fosdem with that badge, it has thousands of attendees, and you had like 70 people scan the badge, and it's even even smaller percentage. And so it's kind of it's not really quite apples to apples, but I feel like the event that we had at BrickHack, while it wasn't as like broad amounts of people, we were kind of zoning into a specific amount of, like a smaller subset of the population. And I feel like the impact we were having, like the interest that was generated and even some of the contributions that happened later on with uh, interest and, and introductions on mailing lists and, uh, and people wanting to get involved just coming up to the Fedora table at BrickHack, to me that was kind of the idea that maybe there's this beginning of a trend that where we're focusing and it's maybe maybe this is a part of a bigger discussion, 
than just this one, but maybe considering where we're addressing our resources to and measuring the impact we're having. Right. Well, I, I'm not sure any of that actually answered the question I was asking, which was what is the end goal you're trying to hit? And it, uh, I mean, I, it sounds like you're kind of circling around the idea that the end goal is increasing contributing contributors. I think then, but to put it simple, I think it's just con increasing the number of people exposed and using Fedora, and then yeah, on but, this. But again, expo exposure, to, uh, exposure to usage of Fedora is interesting, but not as valuable as, expo as exposure in such a way that is providing a path to contribution, which has a, which has a net positive effect uh, for yeah. Fedora. Right. If I, if I can, in kind of, I think that's what we've been doing for the last ten years, and we've got, I think, really good contributor base. On the other hand, it was always like the, the end goal was to have the contributors. And we, were, we got into the situation that we've got contributors that, you know, built something that I wouldn't say no one is using, but, you know, compared to, like, for example, Ubuntu, there is a, a huge disproportion. So for me, right now, we should definitely go after the awareness. Uh, I mean, we shouldn't we shouldn't be less focused on you know getting contributors, but what we like right now is really the awareness and uh, users and stuff like that. That depends reason to reason basis. Like uh, yes, it's I'm true sorry. that most of the students they know about Ubuntu or like not even Ubuntu in this case for their uh, laptop operating system in this case uh, desktop. Um, but uh, when it comes about actually using that operating system to do something which is useful for their courses, that's where the contribution comes from. Because after doing first step, they can become contributors to some project. May not be Fedora, but something which is inside the Fedora lab, like some sub project or some desktop application. So, like, and again, I'm speaking only from the India's point of view how it went up the number of people having fast account, and then a huge drop. 2009, with uh, effort from a lot of Indian contributors, and then making sure that we get um, awareness part is anyway happening, like at least in India, I can say, or a reason, But our main target is, and it was also, that to get more contributors because that's where we are lacking, not the awareness part. So I think it's much more depending on the area or the region where you are talking about. No, what you said is correct, but. I believe it's more, much more about religion. And the last part we were looking at was also visibility. So this can extend to current as well as moving forward, creating different, possibly different guidelines. But establishing a commons for the campus ambassadors will be important. Even if, because uh, I know there's a few other examples of people using other platforms, but. Uh, mailing lists and IRC have their role for log participation in meetings and keeping the project open, but perhaps there's other things we can do to improve the contributor experience. And a lot of that is things we've already seen. We have Mailman with a uh, Mailman 3 with HyperKitty, which is bringing in an entirely new front end to the mailing lists. And one of my favorites is Fedora Hubs, which will revolutionize the contributor experience. But. <laughs> Uh, I really am really excited about Fedora Hubs. It's an incredible project that's bringing in all kinds of different places and bringing in these different things and these different factors of the contributor experience and tying them into a single place. And I'm really excited for that because I think it's going to bring in a new kind of, maybe a new kind of contributor, different kinds of contributions, but it's going to make it, I think, Fedora a more accessible project. And I think things like Fedora Hubs like this is the right direction for me to improve our own visibility and our own outreach for students. Um, and at the end of the day, however it's done, the work that's happening needs to be seen and easily referenced. Reports are important, of course, and documenting success is absolutely important. So that way you can replicate it in other places and you can see, learn by example. Uh, the current method right now is not the most efficient. And there's other platforms, are there other platforms for communication we could be using? outside of just man, uh, event reports, even on like a blog, or are there better tools? Could we utilize social media better in ways for this to engage with a younger audience, to bring more people in? What other ideas could we bring to the table for this? And we kind of intentionally left this a little bit more open-ended at the end to kind of see what some other people's thoughts in the audience are. But for that, if you want to get involved with any of this or throw out some of your own ideas, uh, there's the IRC channel, Fedora Campus AMB, and there's also our mailing list, Campus Ambassadors, 
And a quick special shout out to Artie and Haxa for helping us prepare this talk. He's trying to make it to Flock, but it didn't work out for him. But special thanks to Artie for helping us. And uh, I was wanting to kind of see if anyone else in the audience had ideas, especially going forward with the bringing in new kinds of contributors, like on the kind of topic of like Fedora hubs and. So, because uh, I, I, I didn't quite get the closure I wanted on that mm -hmm. original question, but uh, yeah. what I was looking for was really, you, know, you, you talked about how, you know, we talked, we'll, 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 we'll target some stu students here and we'll target uh, system administrators here and faculty here. Um, what I was hoping to hear if, was that the specific goal of doing those things was to eventually con to convert students into participants at least and contributors at best. I think it's kind of the subset of the general outreach, though. Like, I mean, right. with, uh, sorry. Well, no, I mean, but uh, we have limited resources, and I don't just mean money uh, or, or material, but, per, but time and people. And so making sure that whatever you're doing has the, it has, you know, the most impact is important. And I'm just, I'd be a little concerned if we spend a lot of time producing material on how to, write a, how to build a computer lab that gets used twice. Know, versus, I think there's a lot more to be said about uh, material to teach a teacher to teach open source. That I, I think that has a, that would have a huge return on investment, um, to use business terms. But you know, keeping in mind the end goal is always really important in making those decisions. Right. Um, so in a lot of the slides, you talked about things that we need. So like materials for um, onboarding are interested in becoming campus ambassadors, uh, steps to have people who are involved in campuses, not necessarily just students, rather like the, the one, two, three process, those kind of things. Um, is there any of that existing, or is that still yet to be accomplished? Like, are any of those materials at least in draft format somewhere, such that people can start iterating on them or contributing to them, or is it still just like start from ground zero? I don't think it's quite a start from ground zero because we do have like the existing steps for becoming an ambassador. There's a series of wiki pages you follow through, but they're not exactly uh, something you can, and not saying like to speed, it's about speeding through it, but it's not something that you can look at and like be like, okay, here's the things that I need to do. You have six different wiki pages that have a long, large amount of content. So right. there is a, there is content there, but it's nothing that's easily, it's something that not, it's not like to the point and succinct where somebody can get an idea. Here's the steps I need to follow. Here's what I need to do. Right. But specifically to the campus, I'm not about like ambassador in general. Oh, like I think that's very difficult. Like specific to this campus outreach, there's currently no materials. Nothing that we can easily find. There's the wiki page that exists for it, and I have tried to. I attempted a, a rewrite of it with some more clear guidelines. Uh, it kind of stagnated a little bit with because um, there was going to be a fad last month okay. uh, in Raleigh for uh, looking specifically at education. But I think with D causes departure, it kind of mix things up a little bit. But okay. I think that's something that's still on the table. Because um, that was that was one that I know Spot was going, he had some, wanted to collaborate on for that. And I think it's something that's in the interest of the project to kind of look at that again. And So was, was the goal of that fad and or this uh, session to kind of kick off those types of discussions to get this going? Yes. Okay. And I think having also a Fedora community lead would also contribute to helping that happen with like the rebooting the fad idea too. Um, but it's as far as like current resources go, it's mostly just the same the same wiki page we've had since more or less 2009. So for specific content, it might be out there, but from when I was trying to dig through and find it, I couldn't find anything okay. incredibly useful. We need to Outside the campus ambassador term or federal wiki page, like uh, we from India, like we run a regular annual IRC based training where the idea is to move people from normal users to contributors and it's ninth year running. So we have material ready, uh, mostly with logs and questions, open questions from students and stuff, uh, which actually helped us to produce almost all of the, like except a few people, almost everyone else from India and nearby region actually went through that training. So I mean, we have to do things ready which can be used. Um, so uh, earlier in the talk this um, morning, there's, it was mentioned once again that um, instead of trying, for example, to, for Fedora to be a little bit more focused for some things, for example, the, instead of trying to go for all developers focused on Fedora for Python, is there any thought as well for um, university outreach Thinking out if there's a little bit more focused outreach, you can say instead of just all university 
which includes so many different things, perhaps start with a little focus group to help along. Um, so one of the targets for the FAD, one of the things, like the, the beginning steps to do this, was we wanted to identify at least two ambassador or two student ambassadors from every region in the world to have at least a minimum of six, or it was either six or twelve, but to have a minimum of like this number of people who are bought in to be like the first era of campus ambassadors, um, and they these like these were the resources they wanted to develop at the FAD and to get to get created, um, and then with these resources we trained the first kind of era of and and I, from my understanding of what the plans were. It was kind of mirroring a little bit from programs like, uh, I guess kind of like Mozilla's student ambassador program in a way, where it's a little bit less, um, I guess like comparing the two like between like Fedora's campus ambassadors as is and like Mozilla's program is it's a little bit like, I, I think of like Mozilla's program as a little bit more like stepping, like stepping like stairs and you're slowly doing more and more over time, whereas there's kind of like I think a high, like a high barrier for you to kind of really get going and involved with campus ambassadors. Um, and so I think that was kind of the original plan was to start small and to target at least like find two and two or three students from every region of the world and work with them on a very personal level to help train them up and provide them with specific resources and target their specific needs and then go forward from that and uh, start working on training more with the two or the two or three ambassadors from each region and going forward from there. Um, so I think that's kind of the direction that they wanted to go in in the beginning. I'm not sure if this is entirely relevant, but uh, Stephen made a point earlier that um, we are very keen on getting everybody to be a hacker, but people don't really know what cool things they can do with Fedora, and people like, don't know that uh, Fedora is this operating system for the robotics com world competition or something like that. So saying, saying these things to them and marketing those ideas is, they could be a part of making Fedora more widespread. Talking about what you do with Fedora rather than what Fedora does for you. Isn't it the, the goal of Fedora affiliate? What was the, no, you could sign up and be on the list of uh, companies, organizations that are affiliated with Fedora, yeah, and then you can state, like, we are using Fedora for this and this purpose, and we created this with the help of Fedora. I think there was some. some the affiliates discussion, yeah. 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 Or friends of Fedora, yeah. yeah, that's an ongoing discussion in marketing right now, or kind of stabbing it a little bit, but yeah. definitely. Okay, so now I might sound a little bad what I will say now, so I'm sorry before, but uh, since I have heard about ambassadors, campus stuff, I was always interested. I'm very active on our university. I teach there. I was a student until recently, and I'm an, um, an ambassador. But I have zero clue what shall I do as a campus ambassador or whatever my activities shall be. And it's an IT university, so creating a Fedora lab is nonsense. It doesn't make any sense for those guys to have a Fedora lab because everybody has their own computer and stuff. And I sign up for something somewhere on the wiki. Now there is a mail list, and I don't even know about it, and I thought this talk will give me some insight about what shall I do, but I still have zero knowledge. Is there something, when you say we, is it you two and the third person, or is it like a larger group, is there any activity happening I can join to be in the picture, or is it still like walking in the dark and we just want something but we don't really want What's the target, as we've seen before? It feels so like a nice idea, but nothing to touch. Sorry for being harsh. No, that's perfectly fine. Um, so I think that is really like the key question on like the act, you know, the action items, right? Where to, what, what, what to go from here? And I think that this is definitely something that was like was kind of on the verge of happening, and until a few weeks or really a few weeks ago, it was. Because I was really looking forward to that fad happening, and I was hoping to really have like resources available. So I think right now the current thing would be to have like bring those plans back, and I think having a Fedora community lead would be one thing that would help with that. It doesn't have to necessarily be the fix-all solution, but I really would like to bring this like make this fad a reality again and bring it back on the discussion table 
because I think having the, the in-person collaboration and focusing on like creating the beginning resources or discussing how to go about that and making a final or making something a, a deliverable to people like regular ambassadors who are interested in this and they want to participate, having those resources is a huge thing because that's what's going to really Matt. start making this happen. Matt, how do we do that? How do we do what? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how do we, how do we, so there was a fad that was supposed to happen and then Remy left. How do we make that happen again? like it was supposed to, and get people involved. Was there budget for that fad? It was going to be a local one to rally, no okay. budget. Uh, let's do it, <laughs> bring, bring it up to the council. Um, I think that's the next step. Um, or if it's local, no budget needed, you need somebody on the ground in, in the location that it's at to organize it, that's pretty much what we need. Um, and we can probably find somebody in Raleigh at this conference who do that. <laughs> <laughs> So I think I could probably go and take an action item to bring that back on to the council ticket too and help bring some direction to that. Yeah, that would be great. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention earlier. Since I looked away. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, looking back at what Stephen said earlier, um, I wanted to point out that it's really important to see if this is going to work out. I mean, it would be pointless to reach out to universities to set up the labs and then no one is going to use them. So I believe that the faculty is going to play a very important role in this. I mean, we need teachers, we need professors who will be very motivated, very passionate about this, that can cooperate with us, with the federal community to make this happen. And um, if we manage to do that, okay, first of all, we need to, to focus on specific universities. We should not, not just get campus ambassadors everywhere and yeah. try to reach out to, to random universities. We need to focus on specific universities that, where we have contacts with the faculty and we need to make sure that they can help us. And if we succeed in doing that, not only the students will start using Fedora in their labs, but you know, students is a very important target group and we're probably going to get uh, lot, lots of them as contributors. And that was one thing that we did create a few months ago, maybe one or two, was we had a kind of like a roll call for camp or people interested in doing that. And I know a few of you in the room who have asked questions have added your names to that list too on the University Involvement Initiative page. And so we kind of have a query of the people who are interested to help drive this forward too. So it's information we have available. And I think we, we had at least, with the exception of, a, of, I think, one or two regions, I guess we'll, it probably could use better communication, is really what it comes down to. But we do have a, at least a few people across a few different regions who are actively interested in paying attention to this. Um, or who are ready to be, you know, provided with resources and, and guidance to how they can pr proceed with going forward with this. And you want to add anything? Mm, we can Sylvia. Because we have a picture. Sylvia. Um, there's my question because. Um, I assume many universities in my country, in Uruguay, but I assume Argentina, in Argentina, in Brazil, that when you talk to the professor, uh, or the teachers, they say, uh, no, no, but forget about Linux, forget about Fedora, because it's not used, uh, it's not used in professional uh, uh, ambience. Uh, you, you, you want, uh, you won't learn something useful. You need to learn something that works uh, and that you will use in, in your future job. Is that way in universities in the US uh, that the teacher, uh, like a couple of times happened to me that someone said, oh yeah, that's very nice, works very well, but no, 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 because you won't use this in your work. You need to learn this other uh, yeah. or whatever. Because this is the useful thing. Because you know, where you you're going to be asked this in jobs that happens in university in the US. And you, did you see that? I have a little bit of an answer to that, at least, which is um, I, I have I I've worked at universities in the US, so I've seen a little bit of that, but. Um, I guess most U.S. universities are more focused on theoretical, so it doesn't matter so much which thing it is, unless on the hands-on thing like that. Uh, but even on that hands-on, I've 
pretty good response is that Fedora is the upstream of Red Hat and Red Linux, which is the number one Linux for serious jobs that you can get. And that if you have Fedora knowledge, that will translate very well to knowledge in a job in the future. And if you're looking for a job you know, in the future after you're done with your education, um, starting on Fedora will put you right in a good place to be right timely with the new technology when that comes you know, through the downstream filter. So um, that's an answer to what you can tell people back. Um, but I don't know how the solution for uh, No, no, I, I, I didn't ask uh, really for a solution. It was more like uh, it, it, that, uh, that was going on in university in the U.S. or, in, uh, or if it was different because that... I, I think it is different because of the different focus on hands-on skill versus um, abstract things. There are you know, places where they're still teaching, you know, uh, on sure 64 units or whatever that they happen to have, and it's all the same. It's, you know, it's Unix, so are they, they they're teach, teaching out of a book. It doesn't matter what computer you're using at all. We're down to the last three minutes, so we can probably have time for maybe two more questions. What is? Um, one question that I have, and maybe this is colored by my own experiences with um, academia, uh, do we answer the question of why should a professor care whether or not their students are using open source? Why should they bother putting forth this effort? I've heard the question of how, how do we find these people, but I have had conversations with academics before where the question basically comes down to what's in it for them. Do we have an answer to that? I think right now, at least in the immediate sense, that would probably be a good thing to address in the beginning. I think it would probably start with people who like the professors who already have that intrinsic interest, like some of the people who are here right now, people who are in the teaching field, starting with people who have that in, like the intrinsic interest to teach it and to spread it. I think that would be where you would probably have to start with. Um, I don't know if I have a good answer for that, um, as far as where to go beyond that, but I think that would be something that would be a very good thing to bring into discussion too, so we don't have to depend on people who happen to like open source and Fedora and are also a professor. Because going beyond that too, like if it's a student going to a professor, trying to convince the professor or the faculty member that this is important for, oh yeah, this would be a good thing to bring in and to use. And I know my university is very much a Windows shop. If you want to do something that's not Windows, you will have an up mountain battle. So, yeah. and I don't, I don't, I think that, I don't know if we're the, the, the exception or the rule or either way, but those places do exist where the problem isn't going to be with faculty members, it's convincing them to start fighting that battle with IT. Right. There's this program called Posse, the Professor's Open Source Software Experience, and I just Googled around for it, and it looks like it kind of uh, puttered out a couple of years ago, but I was involved with it at RIT, and it looks like it happened at a bunch of other universities, and it was an awesome boot camp where we sat down, and I had two professors next to me, and by the end of the day, uh, we had two patches submitted upstream, and it seemed like a really valuable program. Um, but the OLPC was the vehicle for the uh, teaching at the time, and I don't know if we have something like that that we can just bring to a bunch of professors and dive into. So uh, it actually died down with the breaking one of community architecture team from Red Hat. Okay. But uh, one of those persons was Harish Pillai. Uh, he's from Red Hat in Singapore. And he's actually still talking about the same Fossey stuff. I know in a pack in few universities because we receive emails that he's trying to get a uh, few of the open source contributors to go to the colleges and do the similar Fossey stuff to continue the same thing. Yeah. So uh, it was a very good example of how to teach, uh, reach to the uh, teachers. And I have two more inputs for you in general, but I want to say that after you turn off the video recording. <laughs> is it possible to um, get students involved by writing theses? Because that's very, very popular in Brno. And we have a number of universities around the um, Red Hat office. And um, they have a lot of activities. Like they have um, two weeks when the students can come and meet Red Hatters. And there are a lot of Red Hat people who work for Fedora. So couldn't they? Uh, work with the students and give them some tasks and so it would count for the American to be able to write your thesis for Fedora. I think it's not entirely possible. Uh, it was definitely something I hadn't considered, but seeing as there's already kind of like a, a beginning interest there, or that there's something to kind of go off of to begin with, um, I definitely think that's something that's probably worth 
considering at the get-go or having a focus on for like graduate students and, and beyond. Um, we are out of time for the session. Um, I don't know if anyone else, there's nothing else after this, so I'd be okay with sticking around. If I think there are lots of things to discuss. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. 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 Yeah.